Senator Birmingham has submitted a proposal under Standing Order 75 today. It is shown at item 12 on today's order of business. Is the proposal supported? I'll just give people a few minutes to get back to their seats. Thank you. It has support. I understand that informal arrangements have been made to allocate specific times for speakers. Um, with the concurrence of the Senate, I shall ask the clerks to set the clock accordingly. Are you, I've got a sheet. Senator Birmingham. Thanks, sir. Thanks, President. President, at question time today, Senator Wong described the Prime Minister as, and I quote, a man of courage and a man of integrity. Well, courage entails I'm Senator Birmingham, taking— I'm sorry, could you move the motion first, please? Oh, I move the motion Thank you. As, uh, as printed. Thank you. Courage, President, entails telling people when you're going to do things that they might disagree with, that might be unpopular with them that might have consequences for you in terms of people actually choosing in an electoral contest to vote against you. That would be courage. Integrity, of course, would be being honest, upfront, direct with them. Well, Madam Acting Deputy President, in the context of the government's decision to reverse the recognition of West Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, Mr Albanese and the Labor Party showed neither courage nor integrity. In fact, it was quite the opposite. Labor's completely unnecessary decision that Australia will cease to recognise West Jerusalem as the Israeli capital has been a shambolic process. It's been contemptuous of so many stakeholders and was executed with shocking timing. Firstly, though, the Labor Party and Mr Albanese were deceptive and misleading in this decision making. Senior Labor members of parliament went to the last election assuring concerned stakeholders, including members of the Australian Jewish community, that on the question of Israel, it didn't matter which way they voted at the last election. The now Attorney General, Mr Dreyfus, wrote in Australian Jewish News on 6 March this year to attack Scott Morrison for the suggestion there was any difference in policies between the two sides. They just said it didn't matter. Mr Dreyfus claimed that across domestic politics, Australia, and I quote, spoke with one voice. He was echoed by Josh Burns, who did likewise, saying that Australia's Jewish community should feel proud that its interests would be safeguarded, irrespective of who forms government. Well, Mr Dreyfus, Mr Burns, other Labor members and senators who provide th provided those reassurances to Australia's Jewish community should feel shame, not pride, for misleading the community ahead of the last election. Because contrary to their reassurances, the Albanese government has taken not one but indeed multiple steps so far of difference, of change of policy. They did so, in fact, within weeks of their election when they refused to join 22 other nations, including Canada, Germany, the Netherlands, the UK, the United States, in voting in favour of a key motion put to the UN Human Rights Council. It was a motion simply expressing deep concern at the disproportionate scrutiny placed on Israel from an open-ended commission of inquiry into alleged human rights abuses. This, I note, is the same council that recently declined to even debate a one-off report on serious abuses in the Xinjiang region of China. So, Madam Deputy President, the government made the decision to step away from working with like-minded and for standing for the principle around fairness and equity in scrutiny. They then have made this decision to overturn the recognition of West Jerusalem, but they've done so in the most cack-handed and shambolic of ways possible, having misled voters, misled the community, said it wasn't going to happen. Then, when it leaked out onto a departmental website, the minister's office rushed to reassure, to reassure the community, the media and the Israeli government that it wasn't happening, that it hadn't happened. And then within hours she came out and announced that it was happening and they were doing it and they were reversing the decision. Happened to do so on a Jewish holy day. Really? Who on earth was providing the advice? Where was the due diligence? How chaotic was the process behind the scenes to be so inconsiderate? 
So inconsiderate that the Prime Minister and the Foreign Minister themselves have had to acknowledge the failure of the timing there. It was also two weeks before the Israeli election. Even if the government hadn't checked the Jewish calendar for holy days, surely they were aware an Israeli election is coming and that this would feed into domestic politics there. Did they speak with the Israeli government? No. Not to consult, not in advance, not in advance of providing this announcement and decision. The Israeli Prime Minister condemned the government and Mr Albanese should be picking the phone up to apologise. This is a mess of the government's making. It's been misleading of the community and an apology is clearly owed to those who have been affected by Thank this you, decision. Thank you, Senator. Your time's expired. Senator Ayres. Well, this motion from Senator Birmingham seeks to, and I quote, reaffirm the importance of consultation and careful consideration when dealing with complex and sensitive foreign affairs matters. I mean, it's like Attila the Hun complaining about human rights abuses. My question is, where was Senator Birmingham's motion when the Morrison government announced an inquiry into the origins of COVID-19 in a Sunday morning television interview without having done the diplomatic legwork to lock in support? Where was Senator Birmingham's motion when Mr Dutton, with Mr Abbott and Mr Morrison, stood around on live television joking about waters lapping around the feet of Pacific Islanders? Where was Senator Birmingham's motion last year when the former Prime Minister blindsided our friends the French with his AUKUS announcement? And indeed, where was Senator Birmingham's motion in 2018 when the Morrison government broke with the vast majority of the international community to recognise West Jerusalem as the capital of Israel? The decision by the Morrison government to recognise West Jerusalem as the capital of Israel broke with a position that had been held by every Australian government since 1948. If ever there was a moment for careful consideration, it was then. There's been nothing hasty or careless, nothing surprising uh, about Senator Wong's announcement last week. When the Morrison government made its position, announced its position in 2018, Senator Wong made our position very clear. The position hasn't changed. The Australian government remains committed to a two-state solution in which Israel and a future Palestinian state can coexist in peace and security with internationally recognised borders. This is a position that hasn't changed since the Gorton government established that position following the Six-Day War in 1967, maintained by Prime Ministers Fraser, Hawke, Howard, Gillard and Turnbull. There's only been one Prime Minister who's departed from that bipartisan and correct foreign policy approach, and that's Mr Morrison. And why did he do it? For base political reasons. It was a cynical political ploy, a desperate and failed attempt. But it's one thing to go through a sort of sordid announcement about a position that is only designed for domestic political purposes. It's one thing to do that, I suppose, and win. It's an entirely separate thing to do it and have it blow up in your face and lose, which is what Mr Morrison did. Abject failure. Even cynics would be embarrassed by Mr Morrison's cynicism uh, on this question. This is a challenging foreign policy question. It should be dealt with by adults. There are competing interests and rights, issues of social justice, a series of historical wrongs, uh, violence, uh, the prospects of peace uh, don't, and, and justice don't seem to be getting stronger, they seem to be getting more remote every year. It requires consistency, responsibility, carefully evaluating the merits and acting carefully in the national interest and the interests of peace with our allies and partners in a way that is consistent and consistent with our national interest. What's the LNP approach been, Mr Morrison's approach? Try and position for domestic political advantage. 
seek political advantage rather than do the right thing. It's been a political tactic to play with the hopes and aspirations of the State of Israel, of the Palestinians uh, and their uh, various supporters and people who are interested in the issue in Australia. Well, the adults are in charge again now. The position, the traditional bipartisan position has been reasserted. Now, Senator Wong has expressed her regret. She said the timing of the announcement on Simchat Torah was deeply regrettable. That will be another feature of this government. When something goes wrong, we will take responsibility, not run away from it, pretend it was our plan all the way along. We'll just take responsibility. That's what Senator Wong's done. That's what we will continue to do. The adults are back Thank in charge, you, and we Senator, will not use this issue for base political expired. advantage. Senator Still John. Thank you. Uh, Labor's decision uh, to no longer recognise West Jerusalem as the capital of Israel is a welcome move. After all, uh, the Morrison government's original announcement uh, was nothing more than a craven attempt to employ an action straight out of the Donald Trump, of the Donald Trump playbook. The Australian Greens' foreign policy is grounded in lived experience and in the needs of the community. Peace and non-violent approaches uh, to the resolution of conflict will always drive our response. We in the Greens recognise the ongoing injustices that have been done and are being done to Palestinian people and express our deep solidarity. We acknowledge and note that the Amnesty International Organisation, alongside Human Rights Watch, amongst other groups, have concluded that the Israeli government uh, is committing the act and is guilty of the crime of apartheid. Following the decision uh, to not recognise West Jerusalem as the capital, we are calling on the federal government to do the following. To recognise the self-determination and statehood of Palestinians and push to ensure an end to the Israeli occupation. Halt military cooperation and military trade with the State of Israel and work towards rectifying the injustices in a way that will allow both Palestinians and Israelis to live in peace. We must work to find a way to support the people of Israel and the people of Palestine to be able to live their lives in peace. Thank you, Senator. Senator Fawcett. Thank you, Madam Acting Deputy President. I also rise to speak on this matter of public importance. Uh, it's important to note that whilst two sides here can trade barbs over the domestic politics of it, that there are substantial issues that go to our foreign affairs. And having worked in the foreign affairs and defence and trade area of this parliament for most of my time here, I'm acutely aware of how our statements and actions can influence uh, the attitudes and the trust of parties that we seek to treat as friends and allies, and can also give succour and encouragement uh, to those who we disagree with fundamentally uh, in terms of their world view. Those opposite have made uh, comments that this is an exercise in crass domestic politics. Uh, but I would just like to quote some of the comments, for example, from Israel's Prime Minister, Prime Minister Lapid, who said, and I quote, in the light of the way in which this decision was made, as a hasty response to an incorrect report in the media, we can only hope that the Australian government manages other matters more seriously and more professionally. End quote. It has been some time since Australia's ambassador in Israel has been summoned uh, for a dressing down in that country. And the Israel's foreign ministry registered, and I quote, its deep disappointment in the face of the Australian government's decision resulting from a short-sighted political consideration, end quote. And I'd just finish on this point by noting that both the Prime Minister and the Foreign Minister have conceded that the announcement was mishandled. So I'd like to go more to the substance of the issue, because I think it's really important that we see what is happening in the world, particularly in the Middle East, 
and we seize the opportunities that are before us. If we go right back to the creation of Israel, and at the end of the war that was launched upon the fledgling state, uh, there was a, an armistice agreed between Jordan and Israel, which recognised that the city of Jerusalem was in two parts, the west, controlled by Israel, and the east, by Jordan. When again the Arab states attacked Israel in 1967, uh, at the end of that war, Israel had uh, taken over East Jerusalem as well as the West Bank and the Golan Heights. And so there was a period, and, and that has continued in terms of international disquiet over the status of those lands. But West Jerusalem itself was never in contention, even back then, and even for the people who now say that we should be going back to the pre-1967 boundaries, West Jerusalem. Uh, is very much the territory that Israel has always controlled and will continue to control. Nations have for some time repeated the lines which we hear frequently and have heard today that until there is a final settlement, peace cannot exist. But the reality on the ground in the Middle East is different and it's changing. We see between Morocco, the UAE and Bahrain uh, an ongoing acceptance and relationship with Israel from Morocco and a new recognition of sovereignty and of the establishment of diplomatic norms between an increasing number of Arab nations, either overtly, such as in the Abram Accords, or through implied or tacit cooperation uh, from states that are now allowing overflight to the Israeli airline, El Al, which were never allowed in the past, and so what we see is that despite comments made by many, some nations, uh, some people, Senator Wong in fact made the comment that uh, lasting peace is not possible until there is a, a final settlement, what we're seeing is that nations in the Middle East are increasingly saying we want to look forward to how we can collaborate with Israel for the opportunities for all our people and lasting agreements and recognition of Israel's sovereignty and right to exist are being established cooperative relationships in the area of security and commerce and sport and other things are being established. And to provide comfort to the recalcitrants within the Palestinian movement that said both in 2000 and 2008 when under the Clinton and uh, uh, when uh, President Olmert and Abbas uh, met and the Palestinians just rejected out of hand the offers of peace and haven't in a meaningful way returned to negotiations, anything that supports that view of non-engagement with Israel will only actually seek to Thank extend you, the conflict. Senator, your time's expired. Senator O'Neill. Thank you very much, uh, Acting Deputy President. And I rise today on the MPI put forward by the Leader of the Opposition in the Senate. I first want to acknowledge those frustrated and those hurt by the, the suddenness of the change in a statement on the website. I particularly want to say, as Chair of the Parliamentary Friends of Israel, that I know how deeply the attachment to Jerusalem is felt by Jewish people who, in the mortal words of Chaim Wiseman, lived in Jerusalem uh, while London was still a marsh. As Senator Wong has said, it's more than a political issue. It's definitional. It's about history faith, identity. It was the site of the two temples, the seat of King David and Solomon, and the scene of the highest triumphs and some of the darkest moments of Jewish history for the last three millennia. Thus, it was a shame, a lasting shame, that those opposite, when in government last, chose to politicise the issue in the first place, and guided only by the impending Wentworth by-election broke the decades of consensus regarding Australian recognition of West Jerusalem. Those opposite were only too happy to vote against recognising Jerusalem as the capital of Israel in this very chamber only four months prior to making that change. On the uh, motion of Senator Fraser Annie, his proposal uh, in the Senate on June of 2018 received this response from Senator McGrath, 
This is what the government thought four months before they went out and unilaterally changed the position. M Senator James McGrath said, the government considers Jerusalem to be a final status issue for negotiations between Israel and the Palestinians. Australia will continue to maintain its embassy in Tel Aviv. The Prime Minister and the Foreign Minister have restated foreign policy on several recent occasions. And I continue to quote Senator McGrath speaking for the then government, led at that time by Mr Morrison. He went on to say the government has no plans to relocate the embassy to Jerusalem. Australia considers that in the view of the highly sensitive status of Jerusalem and its consideration as a final status issue is not conducive to the peace progress to move the embassy there. And he was in good company. We have comments on the record about efforts to build long-term peace that go back as far as Sir Paul Hasluck in 1967, Prime Minister Keating, Prime Minister Howard. The status of Jerusalem is something that will be resolved by the parties in discussion. Labor Prime Minister Julia Gillard, Liberal Foreign Minister uh, Julie Bishop, matters relating to Jerusalem are subject to final status negotiations between Israel and the Palestinian Authority. For decades, that was the consensus. Sensitive foreign policy matters like the recognition of Jerusalem should never be politicised in a cynical manner to win a by-election. And I note as well that the decision to move the embassy was scrapped shortly after the Liberal candidate lost the by-election. The decision was only ever about politics for many of those opposite, and I won't include everyone because there are conviction politicians on that side of the chamber. But I note Senator Birmingham continues to refuse to announce his party's current position, whether he would seek to reverse the decision. I want to acknowledge the deep frustration and the consternation from the Jewish community, particularly the timing on one of the Jewish community's holiest days, Simchat Torah when many observant members of the community were in fact unable to receive news or check their phones and that this decision must have come as a tremendous shock to them when they did turn on their phones. There's no, reality, there's no uh, running from the reality that we face. Uh, Minister Wong has reiterated on many occasions and again in question time today that the website was updated ahead of the processes of government. But unlike those before us, our government took responsibility for the decision and acknowledged that these events are in fact deeply regrettable. Last Monday's announcement has returned Australia to the international mainstream on the Israel-Palestine conflict. And I look forward to that day when that conflict is resolved and that both parties, both peoples, are able to reach a just and fair resolution as soon as possible. Thank you, Senator O'Neill. Uh, Senator Roberts. Thank you. One Nation considers it the responsibility of the Israeli government to decide the location of Israel's capital city, not the Australian government. Israel selected Jerusalem. One Nation approved the former government's recognition of this fact and the decision to relocate Australia's embassy there. The Albanese's government decision is like Germany declaring Brisbane or Perth the capital of Australia instead of Canberra. It's confusing and clumsy. We're critical of the government's decision to switch Australia's embassy in Israel back to Tel Aviv. Is this an entirely political decision to pacify Labor's radical left and gain Muslim votes in the coming Victorian election? Prescribed terrorist organisations like Hamas have already praised the government for this decision to change recognition of the Israeli capital. That the Israeli government was not even informed ahead of time is further indictment of the Albanese government's decision. One Nation considers the decision to be the Prime Minister's clumsy mistake and calls on him to reverse it and again recognise Jerusalem as Israel's capital. Thank you, Senator. Senator Faruqi. Thank you, Acting Deputy President. The government's decision to no longer recognize West Jerusalem as the capital of Israel is welcome, is a welcome move, but it is only a start. It is a simple reversal of an atrocious liberal decision to align our country with the far-right Trump administration's position. This was indefensible in 2018, and it re remains indefensible. So we are back to the status quo. We need now to move forward with an approach that recognizes the brutality and horror of the occupation and makes Australia an effective and impassioned supporter of Palestinian rights. Australia must act to ensure an end to the Israeli occupation and violence. 
Australia must uphold international law and Palestinian human rights. Australia must acknowledge and call out what has been investigated and now reported by Amnesty International, amongst others, that Israel imposes a system that amounts to apartheid. Outrage over the importance of consultation and careful consideration with respect to this is quite misleading. The Labour Party clearly opposed the recognition of West Jerusalem as Israel's capital publicly when it was announced in 2018. So now they are in government. This change in Australia's position should not have been a huge revelation to anyone. Backlash to the decision really has the purpose of sending a signal to the government that any change when it comes to Australia pursuing a policy that is more accommodating to Palestinian rights will not be tolerated. The new Labour government should push back and pursue foreign policy based on the principles of human rights and justice, not at the whim of those who have come to expect nothing but appeasement and pandering to the brutal and oppressive Israeli regime. Senator Bragg. Thank you very much, Mr Acting Deputy President. Uh, there is no question that these are very sensitive issues and they are the sort of issues where um, Australia's multicultural tenor uh, makes it a very complicated matter because we have uh, very large parts of our community that feel strongly about these matters, uh, people who are Australians, uh, and people who have an interest in our domestic affairs, uh, but they see this issue uh, as a, almost an extension of a domestic issue. And uh, I think it is important to place on record that uh, it is a complex and sophisticated issue um, that requires real care and diligence uh, if any government wants to wade into this matter in any form. Now, the first fact to put on the table is that Israel has been a great friend of Australia since its inception, and Australia has stood with the State of Israel uh, since its inception uh, after the Second World War. Now, certainly this is not how we would treat a friend. Uh, the shambolic approach taken here uh, really has, uh, I think, let our friend down greatly. And the second fact here is that it isn't our role to choose a capital of another nation. Um, I can't think of any other example where Australia would seek to impose our selection of a capital city on another country or another jurisdiction. Uh, and so I think it's important that we stay in our lane on this issue. Uh, Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. Uh, it may also be the future capital of a Palestinian state. But the reality is, the historical reality is, and the contemporary reality is, that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. And uh, for anyone who has visited the state of Israel, uh, that would be an obvious fact to them. Now, clearly, before the election, the Labor Party was quite clear in quote unquote, wanting to speak with one voice on these matters, as said to the Australian Jewish News. Now, um, it's been alleged at various fundraising dinners that now Prime Minister uh, went around and uh, gave assurances that that would be the case, that there would be no change on these matters, uh, certainly no change without consultation. Now, um, certainly we can be we're all very aware that there was no consultation here because this was a complete shambles. There was uh, some sort of a change on the website by a DFAT official, which was authorised, unauthorised, we don't know. Maybe we'll find out in coming weeks and months. And uh, that led to some media reporting, which was denied. And then assurances were given to various community uh, members and groups. And then, of course, there was a, apparently a meeting of the Cabinet where it was formalised that we would be uh, reversing our position, reversing our position of allowing another state who is a friend of ours to select their own capital city. Uh, that is their capital city. Uh, and we're now saying, no, we don't believe that your selection of your capital city uh, is valid. Uh, that is the position that we are now in. Uh, now, um, Mr Burns, Josh Burns, uh, who's the member for McNamara, has said that it's insensitive, and I note that the comments made by the Foreign Minister 
uh, are a concession that the process was a shambles. But it is very disappointing uh, that the government has decided to treat a great friend of Australia in this way. Uh, it is unusual to hear a Prime Minister of another country, let alone a, a friendly nation, uh, speak of such great disappointment in the actions Australia has taken. So this has been a very sorry chapter in our foreign relations. Uh, I note at the start of these remarks that it is, it is a complicated matter, it is a delicate matter, but uh, we have to be realistic that this is the capital of Israel. They have selected that city and we should respect that choice uh, as we maintain our commitment to a future Palestinian state. I don't think that being realistic about our foreign relations in any way diminishes the future opportunity of there being a Palestinian state. But I conclude by agreeing with uh, Senator Birmingham's statement that uh, the Albanese government now needs to make amends for this completely embarrassing shambles and needs to uh, fix the fence with Israel. Uh, they will always be a great friend of Australia. Thank you, Senator Bragg. The question is that the motion moved by Senator Birmingham be agreed. Those, are the, those of that opinion say aye. aye. Those against say no. no. I think the ayes have it. No. Division required. Ring the bells for four minutes.
Lock the doors. The question, the question is that the motion moved by Senator Birmingham be agreed. The ayes will move to the right of the chair, the noes to the left. I appoint Senator O'Sullivan teller for the ayes and Senator Pratt teller for the noes.
Senators, a report on progress. Uh, we are going to go to the manual method uh, because of some difficulties with the um, technical system. So your forbearance. Thank you. Senators, there being 29 ayes and 33 noes, the matter is resolved in the negative. Thank you very much.